So what if we want more than one position? If we want more than one position, we need to go, we need to have multiple stage positions engaged. But instead of having just one position, we can just add others. And so how do we do that? Well, we can navigate either by I or with the live. So I'm just going to do navigation with the live. I'm going to go here. Just going to move down a little bit. I'm going to adjust the focus manually on the focus knob. And before I add another position, since I also want to do autofocus on this one, I'm going to click on set focus. And then add it. So then it'll have the proper autofocus offset for this position. I'm going to do one more, a little bit off to the side. Going to adjust the focus, make sure it's OK. Click on Set Focus and add another position. So when you're using multiple positions, you can have the Z change as you're traveling to them. Uh, the software has a bit of a bug where even if you don't click on this, it will move the objective by this amount. So I recommend uh, if you have an air objective, keeping this at zero. Uh, if you have an oil objective, talk to me uh, about it, but it's a good idea to retract it. Uh, the oil objectives with multiple positions and time lapses have a lot of complications. So again, talk to me. But with an air objective, which is what we have right now, we're on a 20x air. I'm just going to leave this at zero and make sure it's unclicked. That'll just make it move more quickly between positions. And I'm going to modify the time lapse. I'm just going to do five points, and I'm going to have a five second interval between them. Again, if this interval is less than the time it actually takes the system to acquire, it'll just go as fast as it can. Uh, but if you want precise timing, uh, sort of a precise sense of what the timing is, it's a good idea to, to check this and make sure that the interval is enough to let the, the microscope go to every position uh, in every channel. In this case, there's only one channel, but if you have more than one, it obviously takes more time. So uh, I've turned off the live imaging, which is uh, in general a bad idea to have things uh, on live imaging, particularly in a fluorescence channel, because we're bleaching and damaging the sample as we go. This is just a demonstration where I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, so I've left that on. I'm just going to go to saving, three channel, time lapse. So this is actually a one channel, time lapse, autofocus, three positions. Um, this is just uh, just sort of a simple nomenclature for me to, to, to know what I've what I've done here. Uh, and I'm going to hit acquire. Uh, and so what it should do is take five time points where each time point it takes one channel at each of these three positions and it auto focuses at every time point. Um, and it also auto focuses at every position. Um, so again, three positions noted here. Before I put each one, I clicked on set focus. The uh, objective is not going to move as I do this. Let's hit acquire and see what happens. It'll go to the first position. You heard the beep. That's the autofocus. It's going to go to the second position. That's the beep of the autofocus. There's the second position. The third. And now it's going to time point two. Because that took uh, less than five seconds, which is the interval that I put in, it's just going as fast as it can. If we had put in a longer interval, you would see something that would say waiting uh, or time left before next acquisition here. So I will restart the video uh, when this uh, acquisition concludes. So the acquisition has concluded. Let me show you what the resulting data looks like. If you look at the folder, uh, where this data ended up, you can see here it is. These are the, the these are the data that were just created. So you can see there's one file per channel. So there's only one channel, which is always Fitzy. Per position, the positions are nomenclated as S sub I. So uh, there are three positions. So there's S1, 2, and 3. And there are five time points, which are noted T1, T2, T3, et cetera, until T5. So if I now drag this into uh, Fiji, uh, what you'll see is that first, it gives me uh, the choice of which positions I want to open. And I can either 
select certain ones or select them all. And then for each position, we now have a slider that indicates how much time, um, so which time point that we're looking at. I'm now going to repeat this, but with um, multiple channels, and I'll go back and show you uh, what um, the data structure looks like when we open it in Fiji. So I've just concluded a very similar experiment to the one I did before, but this one had three channels, three positions, and I did three time points to keep it manageable. Here's the data for this experiment. If I drag the corresponding ND file into Fiji and open all of them, what you can see is that now I have the three positions, each of which has three time points, and each of which has three channels, bright field, uh, red, and green, which I can see more clearly if I do composite uh, and then change the color so that the first one is gray, the second one is red, and the third one is green. So you can see a three channel time lapse. So I'd like to show you a few other things that we can do in the stage menu. Uh, namely, we can reorder how we visit these positions. So instead of going one, two, three, we could maybe go first to that position um, if we wanted to. Um, we can also, once we have uh, a set of positions, maybe we found them in not the most efficient way, like this uh, case. It doesn't seem like the most efficient way to transit between these positions. If we click the sort button, it'll rearrange them so that it minimizes or attempts to minimize the total travel time to all those positions. Uh, it's also the case that if you click on one of the positions and click on move to position, the stage automatically goes there. So if you are, for example, here and you want to go to position number three, you can move to it. If you want to modify a position, so let's say I actually want this position to be a little bit offset in X, Y, or maybe it was not in the right position in Z, I can uh, then click on uh, move it, so I've changed it a little bit, and then if I click on this button, because this says position three, it's going to try and overwrite it. It gives me a, a warning, but if I say yes, it will overwrite this position with the current setting. So whenever you do that, be careful. Uh, make sure you hit the set focus button to make sure that you have the right autofocus for this position. All right, um, so in this case, I would do that and then hit this button to overwrite it. Now, if you're in a situation where you only want to acquire certain wavelengths in certain positions, you can click here on advanced stage position wavelength table acquisition parameters, and you can say which wavelengths you want to acquire at which positions. Uh, I'm not going to go into details on that. I just want to show you that that's possible. Let me know uh, if you're interested, and we can discuss how to use that um, for your particular experiment.